Let's make some pine pitch glue. So the first ingredient is obviously pine resin. And if you think of resin similar to how a body forms a scab, that's essentially what this is. After a tree has been damaged by another falling tree, a branch, some sort of animal, it's gonna emit some of this resin, some of this sap. It's gonna clog the pores and prevent anything from getting into it. By utilizing this resin, this sap, we can essentially create pine pitch glue. You're not hurting the tree by removing this resin. You're just kind of taking off the outside chunks. But you just take what you need. Next, I also like to include some form of organic material, typically in the form of a poo. This is some moose poo. It's very fibrous. And if you don't have this, even something like sawdust or bone dust or some really ground up punk wood, and that's the organic material you want. Grab a good little handful. If you're dealing with rabbit poo or you know deer poo, eight, nine, 10 pieces are okay. If you're dealing with something like moose poo, which is just naturally bigger, three or four will do the job. Last ingredient, some form of wood char. You know, it doesn't hurt to take a couple pieces because you're going to grind it up. I suggest getting a container that is consistent in size and shape. This is like an Altoids can or even like just a little tin can. And the idea is that you can measure out your, your wood char, your pine pitch, and your moose poo in reference to the can. So I kind of walked around, collected a, a bunch of different resins, found some good fresh stuff. This is all that powder that is the resin that I've been scraping off of the trees and so I want to use this, don't want to toss it out, it will all melt. But I want to use about half of the can, as you can see here, just for the resin. So half the can will be resin, the other half will be the wood char and the poo. But when I break up the, the poo and the wood char, so that's my wood char, can I cram that in there? That's my wood char amount. And that right there is my organics amount. So I use the can as my measuring apparatus. More importantly, once I've actually made the pine pitch glue, I can just close this up and I have an easy way of transporting it, as well as holding it over a fire and reheating it and getting it to uh, melt into usable form. Then I'm gonna take my wood char right here and I'm gonna grind it up in this bowl. I'm also gonna take my moose poo or my organics, put it in this bowl as well. My resin, I can just leave in there, kind of flatten it out. Close it up so I don't spill it. Now with this, I'm just looking to take the moose poo and just really open it up, work it between my fingers and you'll see it is like sawdust. It's exactly the organic material. Now why I want this is this gives the resin and the wood char a little bit of a temper. You can use animal fats, um, you can use waxes, you can use any sort of petroleum based products that will help create that kind of temper, that softness. Make sure all my moose poo is broken up. And I'm going to break up my wood char. If you're breaking up your wood char and you come to like a woody piece, just know it didn't char all the way through and you want to get rid of it. fluff and what you can kind of do is you can pull off some of the thicker stuff. It's not saying you don't want to use it but get some of that thicker stuff off to the side. Break this up. Now do a little more separation. All this looks nice and ground. Once I have my wood char and my organics, my moose poo, worked into that powder, now I'm gonna heat up my resin. So one of the biggest mistakes when people are making pine pitch glue 
is they burn the resin. What you need to do is you need to heat your resin up enough so it starts to melt. We don't want it to burn. We don't want it to start to boil. If it gets too hot, it starts to burn and it's gonna really create a very brittle pine pitch glue. Even some coals, we'll get it done. It's gonna melt. When it starts to melt, you'll see it start to thicken up. It's starting to change its consistency. This is also the time, pull out little pieces of bark, pull out little pieces of branch. Slow heat, low heat. Don't let it burn. So once I have it in this consistency, I wanna start adding my wood char and my organic material. And what I'm looking to do is just add this in small amounts, mixing it up until I can get a consistency and that is not too liquidy. If it's too liquidy, you're gonna wind up having just a runny mess the entire time. So you add some, and you do it in small amounts. Mix it in, and every once in a while, you're probably gonna have to hold this back over the fire to just slowly heat it up. Some fine looking pine pitch. Now keep in mind when I did my original measurement, you know, half was pitch, and then you know, of that half, one quarter was wood char and one quarter was some of the organics, that moose poo. Clearly it's gonna decrease in volume just because they were in a whole form. So just keep mixing it. Before you know it, it will definitely thicken up. And that's when you can start adding it to a pitch ball. You can start forming it into a pitch stick keeping it in a little can just like this. So I got a little bit on the start of that ball. Once it's on there and it's nice and good, you should just be able to roll it in between your fingers. Nice and soft, it's malleable. Dip it back in that pitch. Give it a few seconds. Give it a little bit to dry. Dip it on in, give it a roll, pull it out, just like that. Into the palm. But two easy ways of carrying the pitch, clearly, is in its own little container like this or in that pine pitch ball like this. Everyone's recipe will be a little bit different, but I can tell you that if you stick to the pine resin, the wood char, and some sort of organics, moose poo, sawdust, bone dust, something like that, you can produce a very reliable source of glue that will last for a great deal of time. All right, that's how I make pine pitch glue. Thanks for watching.